getting our hearts ready for the EMC and really helping us to understand what we're all in this for. We're in this for everything. Are you with me here? Yeah. Turn in your Bible to Revelation chapter 5. Let's go. Revelation chapter 5. I pray you're not going to sleep on me yet, are you? We, we don't have dead friends in the audience, do we? Dead friends not out there. You're not a dead friend disciple, are you? Oh, no. We, we, don't have, we don't have the frozen chosen in the house today, do we? challenge, a charge, dare we say, that really is, is, is on my heart. Because when I, when I came to the church, much like what Sandy shared, I saw something greater. I saw a love that was greater. I mean, I, I remember the first time going to the Portland International Church of Christ. And I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw the married couples, and I, and I saw, I saw, okay, okay, that's a, that's a, that's a black sister. And that's an Indian guy. Oh. And they are in love with Jesus and one another. Oh. And I had never seen that before. That was a greater love. Oh. I, I saw a tall white guy that looked like he was like a senator or something like this, or the prime minister. And he got up there and he was like super hip hop kind of cool guy. <laughs> and he loved God. And I just go, wow, th th this is such an incredibly diverse group of people. Yeah. And they all love God. I've never seen anything like this. I mean, they're giving me hugs. I don't know them. <laughs> they're touching me. <laughs> I saw a greater love. And I'll never forget, I got baptized in 2000. I became a sold out disciple. And you know how this when you get baptized, everybody's giving you hugs and all fired up. But there was one brother, he pulled me aside. He went, bro, we got to talk. <laughs> You're all fired up right now. You're all excited. But let me tell you something. Satan is going to go after you. Satan is greater than your happy smile. Satan is greater than your happy clapping the way you are. You better be, you better be on guard. And I go, wow, Scott, you're very serious. You're right. <laughs> and we became known as kind of like Shrek and the donkey in the church. Oh, yeah. Scott was like the older guy that was kind of grumpy, but, 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 but knew some things. And I was a young guy. Come on, Scott, let's go here, Scott, let's do this. Come on, Scott, let's do this. Come on, Scott, let's do this. Come on, Scott, let's do this. I'm just all over the place. <laughs> and then I ran into something greater, Satan. Yeah. Greater than me. Satan is greater than you. Yeah. Satan is greater than, than all of us. He, he, he has power. Yeah. And I underestimated, and I almost fell. But you know, when you love God, when you love God more than anything else, you love your brother. And you don't just love him when he's fired up. You love him when he's down. And I will always tell about the day Scott sat at the end of my bed and kept me faithful to the Lord. He showed me a greater love. I love you very much. Right? We say Revelations. No, it's the book of Revelation. 
only one revelation. Just one. And I, I love John because when, when John, in, in the book of John, he, he, he says, look, the, the Lamb of God, he sees something greater than himself. Here in Revelation, he's an older man. And, and he gets a glimpse into heaven. He gets to see, I, I don't know what you, how you would feel if you got a chance to see all the, the cosmic war that we are fighting right now. Yeah. All the angels that are working on you right now to get you to check your Facebook. Ooh. Or the, the, the demons, right? Yeah. And the angels trying to stop you from doing it. The cosmic war. I mean, he, he sees in the heaven. And he says this here in Revelation chapter 5. Verse 9. And he say a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased man for God. John sees and he, and he says the only one worthy is, is Jesus. Jesus who was slain and paid for your very soul with his blood. He says you purchase men for themselves. No. no. He says you purchase men for God. From every tribe and language. Jesus says, you know, I, I took my blood and I shed it for all the English that are in the house. Are you fired up about that if you're English? He says, I took my blood and I shared it for all the Americans in the house. He says, I took my blood and I shared it for all the Nigerians in the matter of fact. He says, I took my blood and I shared it for every single truck. And language and people and nation. Right. Highlighting that simply stated, the church should be filled with every tribe, every nation. There's no such thing as a white church, a black church, an Asian church. There's only one church, the church you find in the Bible. Yeah. That's the church he said. That's the church he said is wonderful. Since you have made them to be a kingdom. And yet the false teachers tell you the kingdom's not come yet. Yeah. He says, you made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on earth and the church said, I hope God is reigning in your heart today. I hope God is greater than everything going on in your life. He is the great I am. John sees something greater and I pray that we can see something greater. That you believe that God is greater. You believe God's word is greater than man's opinion. You believe God's calling is greater than man's calling. You believe God's kingdom is greater than your own kingdom. You know, Nebuchadnezzar didn't believe that. Yeah. He made his own kingdom. He made his own image, all gold. When you look at Nebuch you look at Daniel, the Bible talks about these different metals that will be in descending order and that would represent the different kingdoms over history. You know, the Bible is not only a prophetic book, it's a history book. I mean, the Bible is incredible. Yes. And yet when it gets to his kingdom, it says he's gold. Well, the statue was supposed to be all different colors of all different shades, but he made a statue of pure gold, meaning he wanted his own kingdom. Yeah. I pray you, you see a kingdom greater than your own kingdom. I shared my faith with God this week. I said, I want you to come to church with all nations. Go, no, no. My culture is more important than the call of God. I pray your culture is not more important than the call of God. God is greater. And there is really nowhere to really hide from God. But when Satan comes after you, you better know where to hide. <laughs> you better know where to hide. You know, we all have hiding places. Oh yeah. You may not think so. You got a hiding place. Oh, that's right. I, I've got a hiding place. See, I get ticked off. I get angry. 
And it, 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 it's, you know, sometimes I, yeah, I, I, never, I, I used to think, okay, if I can go to, to a false intimacy, lust and impurity, that will meet some need. It just made me, it just gave me greater depression. Yeah. Right. And greater sadness. Yeah. I thought about messing around with that stuff and even failed, even as a married person. And let me tell you something, the brothers, bro, you need to change. My wife, what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you something. You single brothers. You'd be lucky and happy with the brothers to cycle. Because when you get married, something greater is in its own. Oh. 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 I mean, sometimes I, I, I don't even want to just have to get open about that with Michelle. No way. I mean, she, I would fear her more, more than Jesus. I'm like, I'm going to be pure. <laughs> we all have hiding spots. You know, David says, God, you are my hiding place. Where do you hide? You know, we can hide behind excuses. We can hide behind our past. We can hide behind our culture. We can hide behind the greater pain, the greater suffering that you went through. I was abandoned at 14 years old. I know about that one. We can hide behind our age. I'm too old. I can't do anything. Even though Abraham was 75 years old when he was called to go on the mission field. We can hide. We can hide behind being teenagers. We can say, I'm too young to do anything. Even though you know you know more than everybody. I'm too young. We can hide behind our teen years. We go, I'm not called to account now. But you can't hide. There's nowhere, there's nowhere to hide from God. And you got to know where to hide. And you better know where to hide before Satan comes after you. It's not good to try to find a place to hide when Satan comes after you. You better know where to hide early. Yep. And yet we got to find our hiding place in God, as David did. Psalm 119, verse 114. Are you guys stay with me here? Oh I believe there's a great wickedness coming into the world I read today that in Nepal, they have made it a criminal act to share their faith. Whoa. Mm. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. You can go to jail for talking about something great. Jesus Christ. Mm. We understand Moscow, Russia. You can go to jail for talking about Jesus Christ. But our brothers and sisters in the Moscow church, they see something greater. Yeah. Yeah. They go, you know, God is greater than our life momentary suffering. Mm. And we believe the same thing. I hope you're still fired up about this scripture. Matthew chapter 28. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Matthew chapter 28. Verse 16. You guys still with me here? Yeah. The Bible says this here. It says, then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. This, of course, is at the end of Jesus' life, and Jesus calls them to the mountain. Jesus is always calling us to go to the mountain. He says, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. This is the perfect preacher. And you see that individuals, even back then, with the perfect message, his sermon was perfect, he knew exactly how to get you going, he knew how long it should be, he knew everything, I mean, Jesus was an awesome preacher. Yes. And still people doubt him. You know why? Because doubt is a decision. Wow. It's a decision to doubt. Now you may be visiting for the first time and say, hey, who is this Jesus? Is he someone greater, something greater? I tell you, he is. But I want to challenge you to decide not to doubt. Now if you have questions, questions lead to the truth. Yes. Doubt leads you away. Because Jesus is the truth. And they doubted, even though he was the perfect preacher. Since then Jesus came to them and said, all authority and heaven and earth has given to me, Buddha, Muhammad, and everybody else they took. No, no, no. Queen of England? No, no. Oh, definitely not. not. No. It says, therefore, go and find disciples, because you know you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings by questioning their salvation nowadays. We're so politically correct. We gotta make sure we, we gotta be so nice. We don't, oh, don't want to hurt anybody. No. <laughs> he says, go and make disciples. Yes. Of your nation. So make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Well, what did he just command them? Go make disciples. So after you get made into a disciple, you gotta be talking, you gotta go make disciples. Only then does the last bit apply. Because 
He says, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age in the church setting. That's great encouragement if we're doing that. But if you are not making disciples, God is not with you. And you're in for something worse. We've got to worship God who is greater. And we've got to understand he's given us this great call to evangelize the nations in this generation. When I think about something greater, I think about individuals that I've respected. I think about Michael Jordan, because I'm not as tall as him. You can say I look like him and I'm, I, I just, you know, that's like, just, it just doesn't work. It's Kevin Hart to, you know, lash it in the fellowship or something. When Michael Jordan didn't make his basketball team, he was cut, he was told he wasn't good, but he saw something great in that failure and he moved forward. Because failure is not fail. Mm -hmm. If you see God and you see something greater in your failure. When I think about something greater, I think about Beethoven. His teacher called him a hopeless composer. Oh man. He continued to try and make music for his teachers and one of them said, this is a monstrosity of harsh, bizarre, and orgy of vulgar noise. Oh, oh, oh. The Barbies. Oh, wow. It's teacher, right? But he went on to compose something great. Wow. And do something great. Albert Einstein. The university told him, first of all, they rejected his PhD. They said his dissertations were fanciful. Weird. <laughs> but he went on to do something great. Churchill. He failed year six. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't become prime minister until he was 62. <laughs> In fact, some of his greatest accomplishments were as a senior citizen. Never think you're too old to do something great. <laughs> Henry Ford went broke five times. Oh, of course, he created that vehicle. Of course, he built one of the strongest auto companies yeah. because he saw something great. And I believe that's why you became a disciple of your sold out disciple. Yes. You wanted to do something great. Yes. You saw something great. Yes. You saw a greater love. Yes. You saw a greater commitment. You saw a greater faith. You saw a greater vision. You, 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 you saw God. And you said, I want to do something greater. Yeah. I want to worship something greater than myself. Mm -hmm. You know, when we began our first movement, it was because we, we, we really wanted to do something greater. I'm so inspired by Kip Malena. They're coming down there in Paris right now. We're coming down there. We're going to come down and be with us here shortly. And it's so interesting because, you know, when, when, when Kip was baptized, he didn't see a fire in the church. But he saw something greater in the, in the Word of God. You, know, you may not see a fire in your church, but you can see a passion for God if you get into Scriptures. Yes. And he saw the passion in the Scriptures. Yeah. In our first attempt at evangelizing the world, we've come out of the mainline church. It's well noted at that time, the mainline church had a membership of 150. On average, 50 would come to midweek, seven baptisms a year, and six of them were only the children of the members. The divorce rate was 50%. The largest church outside of the United States at that time had only 300 members. But encouragingly, again, Kip saw the passion in the scriptures. He saw the deadness, but he saw something great. So you don't, you, you don't have to let your culture or your church or where you are dictate your passion for God. You don't have to let your environment change you. You can change your environment with the Spirit of God. What happened? 1979, 30 would-be disciples. But it wasn't 30, actually. It was actually 60. It was 60 to begin with. But 30, 30, down. And they saw something greater, the world. You only fall away when you don't love God. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. A true disciple you can't get rid of. Yeah. That's the reason why we love Nick Georgie. Come on, Nick. Come on, Nick. Yeah. 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 
<laughs> Those 30 would be disciples started a movement. In 1982, we went to Chicago, and that was planted by the Fuquays. Later on in 1982, we came to London, and that was planted by Doug Arthur. In 1983, we went to New York City. That was planted by Steve and Lisa Johnson. In 1986, we planted Johannesburg. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. We then went to Paris, France, Kingston, Jamaica. Yeah. 1987, we planted Hong Kong. Oh, we planted Bombay. We reconstructed Atlanta. We made it hot Atlanta, and we got a hot baptism from Atlanta today. Amen. Yeah. 1987, we went to San Francisco, San Diego, Mexico City. 1988, we went to Tokyo, Munich, and Cairo, Egypt. 1989, the Boston Movement sent out seven church plantings. L.A., Miami, Seattle, D.C., Honolulu, Manila, and Bangkok. 1991, Moscow had 800 people baptized. reach out to people that can speak English and can speak Russian. <laughs> and try and convert them so those people can reach out to the other people so they can make disciples. Come on. Why? They were following, not man, they weren't following their emotions, they were following something greater. They were following God. They were doing something greater for God. And that motivates me to this day. 1996, LA broke the 10,000 disciple mark. You can have 10,000 sold out disciples in wow. a generation. It happened. 1998, right here in London. Wembley, we got 9,000 people in Wembley State. 9,000. We still have the Belfast Mission Team. Oh, oh Belfast. Martin Teresa Scott, they were around back then. <laughs> what happened in about 18 years was us actually looking at Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20, and doing it. What happened? One nation became 124 nations. One church became 312 churches. 171 churches in 196 countries. That's, that's 18, 19 years. Largest church was LA at that time, 12,000 disciples. To quote a man, that, that, that's, that's not a movement that sees man or is moved by man. That's, that's a movement of God. That's right. Because they see something greater. Yes. And yet you hear those numbers, you go, wow, we can never do that again. Oh my, everything I did that was awesome was in the past. Right. But we're doing something greater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah come on, bro. We're doing something greater. Yeah. You know, so far, I hear our church in Lagos last year, they had their first year back, they had 77 baptizing in Christ last year. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that was their first year, and it's so cool because our brother Digi, who works for the number one, on, one lab in the world, yes, UCL, Digi says, if it is God's will, <laughs> they need to go back to Nigeria to preach the word of God to them. I will renounce my education. I will renounce. I will go back. I will preach the word in Nigeria. Four of the, the most encouraging teens around the world come yes. on. Yes. Uh, teens can be sold out. Yeah. Yeah. Teens can be sold out. And we have, of course, that Kia. Right there. Yeah. 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 We have Chris Kane in the house. These are teens yeah. who see something greater than peer pressure. Oh, yeah. They see God. They see God. Come on, teens. They go, you know. You, you, don't have to, you know, we love to say the team of the team, it's, we can't do it. Oh, so much peer pressure. Peer pressure. That's not what Kiara says. No. no. Kiara says, I see something great, I see God. That's not what Chris K says. Oh, yeah. Teens in the house, you see, you see something great? Mm. Let me tell you something, if you don't see it now, you'll see, the, you, you'll see something worse, and then maybe you get grateful and then see something great. <laughs> Come on, bro. First time we went to Paris, we tried. Took a, few, took a few hits. But I, I talked to Anthony just this morning. He says, bro, I think we got two getting baptized just today. Oh. Oh. What I've gone through all the stats this year,
year, we've had more church plantings in the new movement than we've had in the entire movement. We've had nine church plantings just this year. Because we want to do something great. We saw Kona, Hawaii, Monterey, Mexico, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Kiev, Ukraine, Guam, Cebu, Philippines, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and of course the 12th Crown of Thorns Church, Hong Kong, China, and Birmingham. new movement, we're moving actually faster for all you old schoolers out there tallying the score. <laughs> In 10 years time, God has multiplied 42 sold out disciples from Portland, who planted the city of Angels Church into over 5,500 disciples, 84 churches, 33 nations on all six populated continents of the world. Truly, there is no movement of man doing that. That is a movement of God because we see right. something. Greater holiness. Mm. We need greater holiness. The word holy means to be set apart. This world is increasing in its wickedness, increasing in its darkness, increasing in its, 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 its uh, attempt to, the mental predators that are going after your children at school, teaching them that they evolved from dirt, mm. We've got to be set apart. Yep. We've got to be different. We've got to be holy. The Hebrew writer tells us in chapter 12, after we get disciplined by him in a few verses right ahead of that, he says in verse 14, says make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be what? Holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. He says if you're not holy, nobody can see that you're a disciple. If you're not set apart from the world, you know everybody's afraid to have a have a Bible nowadays. <laughs> oh, I got my I got mine on my smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know what you, you don't want anybody to know you're a Christian. <laughs> you know, it's like they say. You know, if if, if there was, if you were accused of being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? You have a Bible? You bring a Bible to church today? You talk about a big, scare people on the tube Bible. Sadly, 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 just being able to have a Bible out in public sets you apart from everybody else. I'm not saying if you're looking at the scriptures on your phone today, I don't want to offend you right there. Amen. 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 You're, you're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. I, I, I'm just calling you to have a greater holiness. For someone to look at you and see something different. Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it. That means that it's everyone's responsibility. So see to it that no one falls short of what? The grace of God. And that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and to defile just a couple of people. <laughs> Bitterness defiles who? Hey. Come on, guys, be encouraging right here. Don't be discouraging. Hey. 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 See that no one is sexually immoral. Oh, boy. You see the transition from bitterness to immorality? Yes. <laughs> that, that's how it works. You get bitter. That's the heart where all kinds of other things start to grow. I know, I got bitter. I, I, I almost fell away. I started looking at pornography as a Christian. I got afraid. I didn't want to tell anybody. You know, I became a leader. So I had you know, a leader now. Oh, my God. I'm great with everyone else. And I had a great rush. Because <laughs> nobody is greater. The only one who's greater is God. Yeah. Yeah. So see that no one sexually immoral or is godless. Like Esau. Who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. He, he gave up his salvation because he was God's. Afterward, as you know, 
when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, even though he sought the blessing with tears. He could not change what he had done. Turn to Romans chapter 12. Greater holiness. I want to challenge you to do something I've never challenged anyone to do, including myself. Let's go to Europe here. Let's go to Romans. Paul wrote to the Romans. He had never even visited. That tells you their deep trust in God. You know, sometimes you say, you can't you tell me anything. You don't know me. <laughs> you spend some time with me before you can tell me if Paul hadn't even gone there. <laughs> he said some pretty challenging things. He said this in chapter 12. Verse 9, we'll pick it up there. Love must be sincere. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. He says that if you're Nigerian, you need to go with our names are better. <laughs> he says, if you're South African, you need to say, the British are better than us. Yeah. British? Come on, Frank. Come on, Frank. <laughs> he says, if you're British, you need to say, the Americans are better than us. You are the worst on the planet. Do you honor people above you? Put them above you. Verse 11 says, never be lacking in zeal. Never. But keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. He says, be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction. He goes, I know it hurts. Just stay in the pain. Yeah. Be patient. Wow. Wow. Stop falling away because it hurts. Mm. Yeah. Just hang it out. The marriage is struggling. You've been married for a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> you know the Bible says marriage is going to have those challenges. Be patient in a fl- You know, we want to download the application for a totally committed marriage. <laughs> Can I go to Google Play and get a sold out marriage real quick? Can I download the application? <laughs> So respectful. Very <laughs> <Got to> patient. <laughs> faithful in prayer. He says you can go out and pray and be faithless. Oh. Share with God people who are in need. Practice hospitality with everybody who comes to visit you at the European Missions Conference from all around the world. Don't do anything without our ever complaining. Right there, London Church. Yeah. Let me give you the challenge. I want to challenge you to hate. Okay. I want to challenge you to hate. You look at this verse. He says in verse 9, hate what is evil. I put before you that one of the most powerful motivations for change is hate. Not love. When you start hating forgiveness, or unforgiveness, rather. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm glad I'm in a sold out church right there. I could have got stoned for that one. <laughs> Do you hate a lack of commitment? Not dislike. No, hate it. <laughs> he says, hate what's evil. Hate it. Hate it. Hate, quit it, hate it. Just hate it. Just don't do it. Just hate it. Yeah. He says, hate Satan, not God. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hate him. Don't hate God. He says, hate pornography. Hate it. Hate divorce. Hate it. And if you're me, hate those Doritos. <laughs> hate them. Doritos, man. I got a love-hate relationship with those Doritos. Hard, right, bro. I love the way they make me feel. <laughs> that cheese, that little, oh, man, you can reach for the one with the lot cheese on it. <laughs> those chemicals, oh, I love it. What they are, man. Oh, it feels so great. Eat that Dorito and it's amazing. I love the way it makes I hate what it does yeah. to my body. Yeah. You know, that's how, how sin is. We love the way it makes us feel, but we hate what it does to us. Yeah. So we need to just start hating it. Mm -hmm. Do you hate unfaithfulness? I want to call you to do something greater in your relationship with God. To start hating things that are ungodly. Do you hate false doctrine? Yes. I mean, can you be talked out of your faith by somebody who's following the Jehovah's Witness teaching? Yes. I mean, do, do we have to do a Bible study on baptism? Yeah. Well, it's quiet. Maybe we do. <laughs> do you hate false teaching? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you hate a preacher getting up there, God wants to give you a home and a bunch of money and you're going to hate one of Chapter 13. Come on, Michael. We need a greater sacrifice. Ooh. Greater sacrifice. The greatest was Jesus. He says this in Matthew chapter 13. Of course, Matthew has written all those, those old schools right there, all those Hebrews. And I love all the incredible insights about the kingdom. We come to this guy who's he just he's so fired up about the kingdom of God. And in chapter 13, he, he says this in verse 44. So the kingdom of heaven is like a, a treasure hidden in a field. It says when a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold a few of the things that he had. No, it says he sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a, a merchant looking for foreign pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. I mean, these two examples are of people that see something great. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. But the kingdom of God costs. It costs. Come on. This guy says, hey. I'll give everything for the kingdom. What's your price? What is your price? Right. Is it 135 pounds for the European Mission Conference? Is that it? Is that really? Is it really? You know what I mean? Is that, is, is that, is that your price? Is that the cost of the blood of Jesus for you? Wow. Is that your cost? Is it people that are giving up and quitting in the war that we're in? You didn't know where we're, we're in the war, guys. Yeah. We're, not, we're not in a church service. We're in a war. Yeah. Come on. In war, you're going to get injured. Yeah. I've been injured. Scott and Sandy, we, we cried because we, we've been injured. But we're battle hardened. We, we, are, we are in this to the death. To the death. I want to go to heaven. Yes. yes. I do. It's going to take a greater sacrifice. This guy sacrificed. Oh, because they saw something great. You know, in order for us to get to all the churches that we need to get to, we're going to have to sacrifice greater. Mm -hmm. yeah. The EMC is awesome, yeah. but it's expensive. <laughs> yeah. You got to keep the lights on. <laughs> got a nice to have some place with the lights on where we can worship Jesus. <laughs> And yeah, I gotta ask you, if God has blessed you, have you decided to give a little bit more? Because you see something greater. 
than your home. You see the holy city. You know, oftentimes people want to live in the country. But heaven, heaven's not a holy country, it's a holy city. You gotta get used to the city now. <laughs> That's how it's gonna be in heaven. In 1 Timothy 6, verse 17, it says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant. Arrogance goes with richness. Let me, let me clear it up. If you're from the western part of the world, you're arrogant. We do not live how they live in third world countries, whether you're in London or America. I know you didn't, I know, oh yeah, that's Donald Trump and these other, no, no. Anybody from the West, we struggle with arrogance. You could be struggling with it right now. Who does he think he is speaking to me like that? But he says command those to be rich. These two guys gave everything. You know, I think about those who really see something greater. I think about when Martin Teresa Scott, they, 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 saw the, they saw something worse in our former fellowship. They saw the church get, get weak. And I'll never forget Martin calling me and those Skype calls on the phone right there. And Martin was hammering me with questions. What about this? What about this? What about this? And him and Teresa came. She was kicking and screaming a little bit. She was fighting. I'm fighting Irish right there. First thing Martin said is, bro, I want to sacrifice my car. Here's, here's my car. I, I just, I, I, want to, I want to build the kingdom of God. And he gave his car for something greater. For something greater. think about Ola and Denise. They gave their house. Wow. Sold it, sacrificed it, wow. tithed it for something greater. Amen. The kingdom of God. Amen. When I think about sacrifice, I, I, I tell you, I, I think about, I think about our, our, our sister April Baker coming to the European Missions Conference. April Baker. April takes away every single excuse for commitment in the movement. She's never complained that she's sick. She just got out of the hospital. I talked to her yesterday. Just got out of the hospital. And goes, I'm coming to the European Mission Conference. I'm fired up, bro. Now, for those that don't know, her heart is functioning at a very low percentage. But she does not ever bring it up as an excuse. She sees her greater sacrifice in this life for something greater. For something greater. <laughs> Lastly, Matthew 6, verse 33. The Bible just simply says this here. In verse 33, the Bible says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We need a greater sold-out commitment to the kingdom of God. We need a greater commitment to the kingdom of God. You know, we've, we've had some incredible victories here in London. Yes. We've seen campus students baptized, remnant moving on in. But this year has been a, we've seen something greater. We've seen Satan go after us in a greater way. Yeah. I, I'm talking, we've seen, we've seen Satan persuade a disciple to lie for five months while fellowshipping with us the entire time. Total immorality. At the same time, well, I don't feel close to anyone. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 59 verse 1 that sin separates you from God. If you're living in sin, you're not going to be close to anybody. 1 John chapter 1 says you've got to walk in the light to have fellowship with one another. If you're not open about your sins and you don't get open, even today you could be hurting if you don't get open and you walk out and you smile like that and you don't get encouraged. You can leave church not with the strength of God. Not being encouraged. But there needs to be a, a, a greater commitment to the kingdom of God. Amen. A greater commitment. Why? Because Jesus gave his blood for the kingdom. Yes. There's got to be a greater commitment. Yes. How about it? 
Have you given up on evangelism? How about it? Are you afraid to call those to total commitment? How about it? You have a greater joy in your heart. Producing greater singing. You know, the Bible says, hey, God sings over you. We got to sing over God. We, 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 we are going to need a greater commitment to the vision that God has for his church. Because let me tell you something. We are not just in a battle of, with mental predators on campus. We are in a battle of good and evil. If you're a young person, he, doesn't not, he does not want you to be committed to God. And he definitely doesn't want you to be committed to the kingdom of God. If you're someone who's older in the faith, he's whispering, Satan's whispering right now, give up. Is it really worth it? Let me tell you something. It's worth it. It is worth it. It is worth it. It is worth it. Let us come out of this European Missions Conference. Looking for the lesson for ourselves. I'm, I'm going into this thing. I go, Jesus, teach me what you want to teach me so I can do something greater for your glory. Give me that greater commitment to the kingdom of God. Give me that greater love, that greater gratefulness. Help me to be a man who, who, who is consumed with Jesus so I can do something. I, I challenge you this year to let this year be your greatest. Let me tell you something. You may have failed. But that could be the day you decide to do something great. Your worst failure can be the greatest day of your life. The day you decide to get back up and keep fighting. I love you. Let's preach the word and evangelize all of Europe in our generation. God bless you.